Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for your kind introduction and all of you for coming here today. I'm traveling with my wife, Nirakula Devi Dasi. She's a disciple of Srila Prabhupada. She joined the Krishna Consciousness Movement when she was 17 years old and uh, worked for at, uh, as a Pujari for Shishi Rukmini Dorkadish and also for the BBT that's been centered in Los Angeles. She wrote the cookbook along with her friend, Bhadra Dasi, called Our Higher Taste. Oh, no, it's called Higher Taste. <laughs> I'm thinking of our family business. <laughs> and um, now we travel together around the world um, from our center in Silicon Valley just to get the association of Vaishnavas everywhere. And I've been looking forward to coming back here, back here for many years because I spent several years here on and off in the 1980s, early 1980s, and I have a great affection for this place, Bangalore, which was only 100,000 people at the time. <laughs> and we all only have one small little apartment that we, a bunch of us brahmacharis lived in, and we did preaching here, life membership, and so forth. I offer my respectful obeisances to my spiritual master, His Divine Grace, A.C. Paktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, and to all of you, you are Vaishnavas and therefore are the most worshipable in the three worlds. Hare Krishna. May I have a clicker? Thank you. So, we are coming in a line from the mercy of Lord Krishna himself. It's his glance that starts this world in motion. And it's his glance that sustains it. The eyes of the Lord, when they glance upon us, give us all sustenance. And we're enlivened by him. Every living entity is eternally searching after happiness, but bewildered by the myriad lights and which are all reflections in this world of the original spiritual light, the various objects of desire in this world. It's a bewildering array. Even driving here this morning, I saw everyone has a different conveyance See, there's different kinds of music. <laughs> there are varieties on all sides of us, but I was thinking this morning how the only thing inherently spiritual in this world that can satisfy us is our glance. Think about what a glance is. Like right now, you're looking at me, I'm looking at you. And what is that energy through which we're able to connect to one another? The apparatus through which we're projecting the glance is mechanical, it's a yantra. But the actual glance itself, what is it? Is it Wi-Fi? Is it a, some kind of a flashlight? Is it electricity? It's none of those things. It's non-material, actually, because we're non-material and we're looking out from these bodies at others. And when we cast our glance on material things, we feel Hare Krishna, we feel dissatisfied. Hare Krishna. We feel dissatisfied because we don't really have a connection with this world. Asango Hyayam Purushaha, the Vedas say, we have no real connection to the world at all. And therefore, there's a sense of frustration moving about trying to consume with our eyes, with our tongues, with our ears, the sounds, the visions of this world. The only thing that will actually satisfy us is the touch of the internal energy. And that touch of the internal energy comes from Krishna. And as we know in the science of Krishna consciousness, Krishna manifests himself in various ways. Is everyone okay? Okay to concentrate? It really helps if you pay attention. Even though there's going to be distractions because technology is involved in it, it's going to be distracting. Please don't pay any attention. 
The only thing that satisfies us is, is connection with the internal energy, and that internal energy manifests in various ways. In my observation over the years that I've been connected with the Christian Conscious Movement in my personal experience, the most effective and wonderful way in which Krishna manifests in this world is through the Shastras. I first got a book sitting in my own home, not having met devotees, and I felt the spiritual world open to me. I felt Krishna speaking to me directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Through the Sri Shapanishad, I could see that I lived in a universe, a universe I always wondered about. I wondered how far it went, if there was a door on the other side, and if so, where did it lead to? And all that was answered in the Sri Shapanishad. I felt a divine presence in my life. As soon as I received the transcendental books that Prabhupada purposely wrote, published, and then arranged to be distributed. So our Krishna consciousness movement, Prabhupada said, is really about helping people to become happy and reconnect with the real source of happiness, which is Krishna. People don't know that. And therefore, it's a service that's extremely dear to Krishna. The prayers personified Vedas say that the Lord's most magnificent pastime is saving the conditioned souls from this world. And those who distribute the transcendental literatures, these Shastra deities, are directly involved in that. That's why when you go on book distribution, you'll feel connected to Krishna in a way that you may never have felt it before. It becomes a sustaining feature of one's life, going for book distribution. And it doesn't mean you have to go every day. It doesn't mean that you have to drop everything else. But at least keep in contact with it on some regular basis. I say at least once a month. Take time to go out. When you go out for book distribution, there's a kind of exhilaration that takes place because it's a little bit scary, isn't it? When you drop what you're doing, first of all, I'm attached to what I'm doing, and now I'm going out and doing something else, and then I don't know what's going to happen. I like to control my environment as much as possible. Anyone else like that? Like to stay in a controlled environment? <laughs> So you, you have an idea, of course, we don't, we don't really know what's going to happen, but we, we, we like to think that we, we're controlling our environment. But when we go on Sankirtan, there's a sense that I don't know what's going to happen now. Anything can happen. I'm putting myself in Krishna's care completely. When you just walk out the door with the intention that I'm going out and I don't know what's going to happen. I've been going out on book distribution since 1973, and I still don't know what's going to happen when I go out. And oftentimes I have people following me around thinking, yeah, show me how to distribute. And I'm thinking, Krishna, yeah, show, show us how to distribute. <laughs> because we can't, we can't control that environment. We have to depend on Krishna. It's one of the reasons that there's so much spiritual oxygen in book distribution. So I, I call book distribution high sadhana. It's a kind of a practice that is meant to connect us to Krishna in a way that is very intimate. After all, it's Krishna himself in the Bhagavad Gita who says that anyone who teaches this to the devotees is the most dear to me. And I guarantee that that person will go back to Godhead. I mean, that's a powerful declaration by Krishna. And those who are wise, they look for these kinds of deals. It's like sometimes people clip coupons because they want to find the best deal at the store. And those who are smart, they look through the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam and they say, where can I actually get the bargain here? <laughs> those who are really smart, they figure out, if I preach Krishna consciousness, then I'm immediately become dear to Krishna. And Prabhupada said, the best time to become a hero is during wartime. Now he gave the scenario that a farm boy, he was in America when he was teaching us this in Chicago, and he was talking about a farm boy from the Midwest of America, grows up in a simple environment, rural environment, and will never be known ever in the world. He'll have, live in a simple place, a small town, and do some farming. But the war starts, and 
farm boy goes off and signs up for the military. He's in the lowest rank, so he gets sent to the front lines where you're most likely to be killed. And then during the heat of one battle, he jumps in and he saves three people, even at the risk of his own life. Now he comes home and he's a hero, national hero, on television. Everyone knows his name. He has the medal, star, of, star from the, the president, gives him personally, Purple Heart Award. And Prabhupada said in the same way, those who dedicate their life to book distribution, they're going out in harm's way, apparently. We're already in harm's way being in the material world. But apparently we're putting ourselves on the line when we go out. Especially we're putting our, our sense of control on the line. So I, I like to say, and it, I, I believe it's true, that the hardest part of book distribution is just walking out the door. Because it's, a, it's easy enough to talk about it and philosophize about what book distribution is and so forth. But to actually go out and try it, that's exhilarating. And unless you're gambling, and you won't get that a sense of exhilaration. Life becomes predictable and boring and dull. And Prabhupada said, there's a replacement for each one of the four regulative principles. Because we can't just give things up. We're living entities. We're attached. But you can reattach yourself to something else. And in the case of gambling, he said, if you want to reproduce the same feeling, then surrender to Krishna. So then you're gambling. Gambling away your sense of control. And say, okay, Krishna, now I'm in your hands. And the best way to do that is book distribution. So a few simple points. The Krishna consciousness movement is not very, it's a, a simple process. It's not complex. Let me tell you what I mean. Srila Advaita Acharya actually is the founder of the Krishna Conscious Movement in this sense. He started the Krishna Conscious Movement in a simple way. What did he do? What was his daily activity? That came later, worshipping Shalagram. What was, what was his regular daily program like at his house? He did, he did a Bhagavad Gita class. At his house, every day, he had a, a Bhagavad Gita class, and he just invited anybody from the neighborhood to come there and participate and listen. And then, of course, they'd chant, and they'd have a Bhagavad Gita class. And Advaita Acharya looked around, and he said, the condition of the world is unacceptable to me. But, he said, I need help. I want to expand the Krishna conscious movement to save the poor souls. And this is... This is the sign of an advanced devotee that he or she feels suffering because of the suffering of others. When we see others suffering when we're in material consciousness, Prabhupada says, or when we see somebody fail, then secretly I become happy. Prabhupada said, no matter what you say externally, this is the nature of envy. And when I see somebody successful and happy, then I think, why is it them, not me? But a Vaishnava is the opposite. A Vaishnava thinks, I'm unhappy to see other people suffering. You can't tolerate it. And Srila Advaitacharya could not tolerate it. And he's, he felt, I need help. Do you ever feel like that, that you need help? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's, it feels good even to admit it, doesn't it? Because the ego wants to say, I'm all right. In fact, we meet people all the time on book distribution, don't we? We show a book and we say, I'm fine. And Prabhupada said, this is the fine in the hospital where the man has tubes coming out. How, how are you? I'm fine. We're not fine. <laughs> really not fine. And when we admit it and we open our heart to Krishna and say, I'm not fine and I really need help, this is a powerful moment in our sojourn here in the material world. So Dvaitacharya, he needed help to spread the Krishna conscious movement. He felt things were so bad in Kali Yuga that only if Krishna personally appeared could 
he hold back the tide of Kali Yuga and give people the benediction that he so wanted to give them. So this is the culture we're in. This is a very high-minded culture. It's non-envious, which is the, the essence of all religion is to give up envy. There is no greater religious principle than to give up envy. The Bhagavatam says this ninth canto, a seventh canto. And so Advaita Charya, oh, I, have, I actually have slides, look at that. <laughs> I'll show you a few slides. There's Advaita Charya worshiping Shalagram Shila. And of course, as you know, he, he found a verse that said, if you offer the Lord Ganges water and Tulsi leaves, then he becomes indebted to you and he'll do anything for you. So Advaita Charya was crying out for the Lord, please help to spread the Sankirtan movement. So this is the clue. You may think there's many techniques for book distribution, but there's only one, and Advaita Charya showed us what it is. You really have to cry out to the Lord. In Weight Watchers, it's a, it's a program in America for people who want to lose weight. There's a big sign they put in their lobby, and it says, you gotta wanna. Say, you gotta wanna. You gotta wanna. Say it. You know what that means? It's slang for you, you have to really want it. You've got to want it. But in, when you do kind of in a slang, you say, you gotta wanna. Like you gotta, you really have to want it. So this is the first key to book distribution. And unknowingly, I used this key when I first joined the Krishna Conscious Movement and I was introduced to book distribution. And I was very eager to distribute more books. It was just starting to explode. There were only uh, some incidents where devotees had distributed big books and there were a couple devotees who had excelled and they were selling sometimes 20 big books, 40 big books in a day. And to the rest of us, it was unimaginable how they could do such a thing. I remember once in our temple when a devotee had distributed six big books and he came home, we had an Ishtagoshti for the whole temple to find out how he had done it. And then we heard about another devotee in another temple, he was selling 40 big books. And we said, that's impossible. People said, that's, that's not true, it's a lie. <laughs> but when we verified it, it really struck me that, how is it possible? And I wanted to know. So I went to the book room each morning when I chant my japa, and I, I took 40 big books and I put them on the shelf in front of me just to see what that many books look like. And I'd sit there and I'd chant japa to those books. And I was crying out. I was saying, Krishna, show me how to do this. Please, I have no idea how I'm going to do 40 books, but if you show me. So every day when you get ready for book distribution or for anything, for any of your devotional activities, the real secret is to cry, to beg. This is, uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur writes about this. Enechiya shaudi maya nashi bharo lagi harina mahamantra lao tumi magi. Magi means to beg. And so we're helpless, we're tiny, but Krishna is our friend. And if we really beg him, he'll help us. So that's what Advaita Acharya showed. That's why he's Acharya. He showed the example that we need Krishna's help, and the way to get it is to worship him and really call out from your heart. So that's the end of the seminar, and thank you very much for coming. <laughs> well, actually, Lord Chaitanya did come. He appeared because of the loud cries of Advaita Acharya. He said so when he came. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement is very simple. There's two parts. One part is chant Hare Krishna. Everyone say it. The other part is teach others. Part one is? Part two is? Okay, now you have to say it. So, if I come and wake you up at 1.30 in the morning, tomorrow morning, and I say, what are the two parts of the Hare Krishna movement? You'll say? 
Yeah, if a, if a movement is simple, it's easy to pass on. And ours is simple. It's only two parts. Chant Hare Krishna, teach others. Both parts have to be there. We don't just chant Hare Krishna, we also teach others. I say this is like rice and dal. Rice is a good food. I love rice, especially basmati rice. I had some the other day. I can't stop thinking about it. And dal is good, especially mung dal. There's no, there's no better bean in the world. Anyone? Mung? You like mung? One person only. You don't like mung down here in South India? A little bit. Basmati rice is very good food. Mung, very good food. But when you put them together, not only is it the tastiest thing on the planet, but there's also 42% more nutrition by Synergy. That's in Jamuna's cookbook in the section on rice. You can look it up. It's in Shastra. In the same way, chanting Hare Krishna is very good. Teaching others, very good. But when you put the two together, then you have super sadhana. That's the power. Put the two together. Don't just chant Hare Krishna and don't just teach others. You do both. So it's a marketplace. Marketing is a science. Anyone study marketing? A little bit? Yes. Marketing is quantitative reasoning skills and also aesthetics, quality, thinking about psychology and, and presentation. It uses both parts of the brain, doesn't it? Qualitative and quantitative reasoning in marketing. Marketing is a, bi it's a big science. Uh, how to present things in such a way that people will take it. That's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Ananda, when they came, they opened a marketplace. Marketplace means business, an enterprise. In fact, it's described in that context in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is described as the greatest capitalist, spiritual capitalist. We're interested in spiritual entrepreneurialism. We want entrepreneurs. We want people who start the Hare Krishna movement all over again in their own right. We're all part of one big movement, but we want those that use their lives to help all the souls of the world, and they use marketing, qualitative and quantitative reasoning skills to expand it, taking it seriously. Marketing is a serious business. It's what makes the world go round. Here's the mission statement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, every town and village. Isn't that a nice mission statement? It's all-encompassing, right? And in the beginning, when Vaishnavas, Gaudiya Vaishnavas, would talk about this in India, and nobody had come, brought Gaudiya Vaishnavism to any other country at that time, many of them thought that, well, this means every town and village may be in India. Even that seemed inconceivable. What to speak of taking it to other countries? That was not even, you know, something they would venture into thinking about because, like, how, how could that happen? But some did think about it. The, the great souls were constantly thinking about it. Of course, the movement after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became hidden for some time. It went underground. This is the nature of the material world. Even the parampara and the transcendental vibration, Krishna tells Uddhava in the 11th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, by the influence of the modes of material nature, it becomes obscured. And so did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings until the great Bhaktivinoda Thakur appeared. And Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur effectively reopened the marketplace of the holy name. Let's please say, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Jai Bhaktivinoda Thakur. The Bhakti Vinod Thakur is so powerful. When I was in Mayapur in 1975 for a festival, when Prabhupada came every year, 19, uh, every year in March, we go there for Gaur Purnima. All the, practically everyone in the movement would come there, and that was, we could still all fit there. And uh, we were having a kirtan for Prabhupada after his morning walk, and he was coming back into the temple room. The Sankirtan devotees would greet him, and he stopped. And he said something to the, his um, devotees that were around him, and I didn't hear what it was. The kirtan was going on. But later I heard the recording, and he said that, we have brought them here, Prabhupada said. He said, now 
the mercy of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he can deliver them. Mm. Prabhupada had so much regard for Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. These acharyas are with us. It's not that they're historical figures, they're eternal transcendental figures who are with us always. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur brought this marketplace back to life. And he declared it open. Sarabhi Kunj, you know, like you have that sign in your window, open for business. Now it's open again. What a day that was when he reopened the marketplace of the holy name for the whole world, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He made predictions. First of all, he prayed. He felt helpless. He said, please send me a ray of Vishnu in my family to help me spread this. Boy, what a ray of Vishnu appeared, right, in Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. And he also was a spiritual visionary. He saw that a great personality would come to help spread it all over the world. You have to have this kind of conviction and optimism to see that the Christian conscious movement can spread. If you, if you have that sense of confidence in the power of the holy name, then you think, of course, this could happen. In fact, great souls, they see the future of a person because they know that the holy name is so powerful that one can become transformed and improved. The lowest of people, they judge somebody by their past. They say, well, this is how they were in the past. Therefore, that's who they are. A little more advanced person judges a person by who they are now. Oh, forget the past. This is who they are now. But the greatest of personalities, they see the future of a person because they know the potential of every soul, especially when coming in contact with the holy name. Shukadeva Goswami says that this is our theme for our Krishna consciousness movement. Anybody can be delivered. It doesn't matter how fallen. We're not interested in just saving people who are already advanced. This isn't a, a, a just for people from a certain continent or culture. It's for everybody. In fact, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur in one of his writings said, we're concerned with spreading Krishna consciousness even to the vegetable tribes. So if someone can try that today when we go out for a Sankirtan to influence the vegetable tribes to take to Krishna consciousness. So at the Bhagavatam says in Chaitanya Charamita, there's always some pure soul. Even when the movement goes underground, the holy name is always going on. There are always Vaishnavas in the world. How could the world survive without Vaishnavas walking on the earth? The burden would be too great. But sometimes they appear like waterfalls. Sometimes waterfalls come out and they're available and other times they're not. So similarly, Vaishnavas, they're always there, but sometimes they come out and sometimes they're silent. Now this is not one of those times because the great Acharya Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, that ray of Vishnu, he was not at all silent. <laughs> he came out with the loudest voice he could. He said the Briyat Madanga is the loudest voice that you can make in this world for Krishna, the printing press. And he expanded the Sankirtan marketplace beyond India. It went past the shores of India. First of all, the Gaudiya Math was a huge success, huge success all over India. Gaudiya Vaishnavism, the face of Gaudiya Vaishnavism changed because of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, because of the degradation after the disappearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. People did not think well of Gaudiya Vaishnavs. If a Gaudiya Vaishnav knocked on your door, you'd think, give him something, get him out of here. They're just beggars. There was all kinds of distortions of the movement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur fixed that. He brought back the glory of the teachings of Gaudiya Vaishnavism, all the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He trained all his followers in ways that, would, that amazed the world to see such upright citizens of the spiritual world. Then, when Abhai Charanaravinda, the humble disciple of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, a grahasta amidst, amidst a sea of brahmacharis and sannyasis in the Gaudiya Math, 
humbly asked his guru, what can I do? What, how can I do some service for you? I, I can't be as close to you as the others. I have family, I have business, and so forth. Among other things, and this is a memorable mantra that he taught to his disciple, but Srila Bhaktisiddhanta said, if you ever get money, print books. He gave that mood. He said, we have built this temple in Bhagwazar, and now I notice that my disciples are fighting over which room they get to stay in. This fighting, by the way, is a sign of a Kanishta Adhikari. Kanishta Adhikari, Prabhupada writes in the Sri Yashapanishad, they fight amongst themselves. I'm right, no, I'm right, this is my room, no, that was my room, I was here first. Madhyama Adhikaris, on the other hand, they use all their energy to think about how to expand the Sankirtan movement. Which would you rather have if you were starting a community? Would you rather have Kanishtas fighting over little trifles? Or would you rather have Madhyama Adhikaris who are taxing their brains thinking how to spread Krishna consciousness? So on this side, you can vote. On this side, Kanishta Adhikari. This side, Madhyama Adhikari. So who wants to vote for the Kanishta community? Who wants a community full of Kanishta Adhikaris? Raise your hand. No? Okay, Madhyama Adhikari. There's a few more. How do you become a Madhyama Adhikari? We'll talk about that in a while. Prabhupada said he took up this mood of his guru. And this is the secret to success in spiritual life, to take up the mood, the order of the, of the guru. Prabhupada writes, in the second canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, that the order of the Supreme Personality of God it is a manifestation of his internal potency. It is by that potency that one comes to see the Lord face to face. Look no further than the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead or the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead coming through Guru. If you take it, you'll come to see the Supreme Personality of Godhead face to face without a doubt. So Srila Prabhupada maintained this mood. You know, recently when I was writing my book, it was a few years ago, I believe, if I remember correctly, I wrote that book. And I was doing a lot of research. I mean, I was there in the 70s. I, I heard it from Prabhupada himself, and I felt the mood, the way Prabhupada was propagating book distribution. He pushed it, and he pushed it hard. And it was his life and soul, and he expressed it in many ways. But I started finding that people were writing things about book distribution saying, it's actually that important. Devotees became fanatical. Prabhupada wasn't like that. Blah, blah, blah. And so I started interviewing some of my senior god brothers and saying, what, what do you think of this? And they said, this is ridiculous. They don't know anything. They're upstarts. Prabhupada's mood was always cent percent engaged in this compassion, and he expressed that compassion through the mass distribution of books. So it's important to know the mood of our founder Acharya. What was his mood? That can become obscured. If the, if the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu after he departed can become obscured, so can the teachings of our Acharya, Srila Prabhupada, become obscured. That's why I wrote the book, Our Family Business. I based it on interviews with uh, content, those devotees who are here at the time Prabhupada was teaching book distribution, manifesting his expansion of Sankirtan all over the world and so forth. So picking up the mood. He spread the marketplace all over the world. Did he not? Say yes. yes. I mean, it's a, miracle. it's a miracle, actually, the things that happen. You can read all about it in these books by Shamasundar, by Mukunda Maharaj, and so forth. You can see that the mood, at the, the things that happened were... You know, there were a few centers open in America, Maladi, Shamasundar, Mukunda, Janaki. They came to Prabhupada and said, uh, we'd like to get the Beatles involved. And Prabhupada said, go ahead. I mean, how are you going to get the Beatles involved? You don't have any money, you just started. The but they did. <laughs> they did. <laughs> I mean, there's one thing after another. These miracles happen when, you're, when you take shelter of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with the mood that I want to spread this all over the world. That's where you can expect miracles. So look at this, Srila Prabhupada's first pamphlet to advertise his book. At this time, there were only three volumes of the Bhagavatam, then it was the first canto in three volumes, right? Now here's what Prabhupada wrote about them in the pamphlet. He says 60 volumes of elaborate English version. He had three, he says 60. 
And he also said, all over the world for scientific knowledge of God. All over the world, he doesn't have any money, he has no associates, he has no connections, he has three volumes of books, he says 60. That's how Prabhupada thought. That was his vision all over the world. So he writes in a, a purport about the mood, Prabhupada writes about the mood of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He says, this is the mood of Lord Chaitanya. If you want to know what Lord Chaitanya is thinking, he said, I want everyone to be immersed in this inundation of love of Godhead. That was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's God. He's Krishna. And he's thinking, I want everyone to be immersed in this inundation of love of Godhead. And that's what Prabhupada calls the Lord's plan. Is that clear? Say yes. yes. Okay, now here's Prabhupada's plan. He said, by printing books, we can actually inject our movement into the masses of people all over the world. And I like this idea of distributing books and preaching. That is Lord Chaitanya's plan. You see the parallel? Are you seeing the connection? Say yes. yes. Thank you. There is a connection here. So, welcome to the Sampradaya of the book. Did you know that we're called the Sampradaya of the book? Are you aware of that? I was not aware of it until I wrote my book and I asked uh, Rabindra Sarup Prabhu, the, the, the great sage and scholar. Rabindra Sarup Prabhu, you know him? He's one of the early, early members of the Krishna Consciousness Movement, brilliant scholar and just the purest hearted devotee you'll ever meet. I got to know him in, in Philadelphia in the early days and then later on I was there uh, teaching Sankirtan seminars. There was a rumor about uh, Rabindra Prabhu, that he didn't like book distribution. It was a false rumor, but there was something about it. He didn't like the way some people were doing it in the early days, so this rumor got started that he didn't like book distribution. So I was at the, at the Philadelphia Temple when he was temple president. This was several years ago. And I was working with the team, and we need to requisition several items. One thing, we needed a book room, we needed uh, vehicles, we needed all kinds of stuff to, to get the party started. So we were asking, and he kept saying, granted, 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 I'll give it to you. And I looked at him halfway through the list, because half the devotees thought, he'll never give us all this stuff. And I looked, I said, wow, you're really into this. And he goes, I was there. I heard it from Prabhupada. He wanted book distribution. It's not true that I don't like book distribution. I want it to go on everywhere. And so you'll find this mood that was inculcated in the hearts of the devotees from the early days. You go test anyone who is here on the planet when Prabhupada was, and you can still have the opportunity, but better work fast, because we're all heading out of here fast. And you'll find the same thing. Everyone will tell you the same thing. So if you want to pick up the mood, this is the mood. And Rabindra Sarup Prabhu told me, he said, did you know that we are called the Sampradaya of the book? And I was fascinated by that. He wrote about it in the introduction to my book. He wrote the introduction to my book, Our Family Business. Now, I want to give you a little quiz. It's, a, it's visual, and you just have to answer me uh, as a group, okay, to pass the quiz. Are you ready? Yeah. It's a little bit difficult, so bear with me, okay? You ready? Yeah. I'm not convinced. Okay, what seems anachronistic about this picture? What does anachronistic mean? I can't hear what you're saying. <laughs> it means something doesn't seem like it fits the time, right? So what, what about this picture seems a little funny to you? You explain it. G give this Mataji here, what is your name? Huh? Anuradha, give her the microphone. We have an extra mic. Here it comes. You're going to get a mic from Madhava Govinda. Okay. What's, what's anachronistic about that picture? What looks a little funny to you? Funny, uh, I, I don't what know. looks a little strange? Is he's that holding microphone? A book. What's wrong with that? Brahma holding a book. He, he's the creator. Uh, but the so he's a creator? Who couldn't he have created a book? What happened? What's wrong with the picture? But the knowledge has to come from higher... Uh, Okay, you're getting close. It's a simple answer. What's the answer? 
the knowledge is imparted from Krishna knowledge is more less philosophical than you're making it there weren't any pr printing presses back then there were no books at the beginning of creation there were no kinkos there were no bookstores there were no books <laughs> Prabhu has a, a follow-up These are kettle drums from the demigods. <laughs> because appreciating your answer so much. Go ahead. <laughs> are the microphones not even on? Are they on? Yeah, okay, on. go ahead. So what is reading and what is distributing? Yeah, it's a simple answer. There were no books at the beginning of creation. But he's holding a book. It's a symbol to show that we're into distributing knowledge. That's why when you see a picture of Brahma, it's always holding a book at the beginning of creation because it's meant to show this is our job, this is what we do. I'll, I'll, now I'll continue the quiz a little bit. Are you ready? Okay, there's only two answers here. You either say books or book. And I want you to say it all together. And it, it's a, say, one, everyone say together book. book. But say it louder. Book. I want you to scare the devotees down there who are making the noise. Go ahead. That's good. Okay, here we go. Srila Vyasadeva. Oh, what's he writing there? Okay, it didn't work because you had to say a book. He's writing a book. Okay, that works. Okay, Srila Madhvacharya, you see what he's holding in his hand? What is he holding in his hand? Book. Correct. Uh, Srila Rupa Goswami, he's kneeling before a very good. You're doing good so far. Here's Srila Sanatana Goswami. He's depicted here sitting and writing a book. Correct. <laughs> Six Goswamis are famous for writing books. Correct. Oh, I just noticed this. Here's a picture of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. What is he posing with? Books. What about, oh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. What, what's that behind him? Books. Correct. Okay, there's only one last question. Are you ready for the last yeah. one? Here's His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. By the way, what's he posing with? Books. Correct. You are correct. You did very well. You got 100%. That's why we're called the Sampradaya of the book. We're into books. Books are very powerful. Look at some of the books that changed the world. This is the... Little known fact here, but this is the, the best-selling book per capita of any other book ever in the history of the world, per capita. It was, it was sold to everybody in the colonies before the colonies became the United States of America. And this was a small book, about the size of a POY, Perfection of Yoga, that uh, convinced everybody in the colonies to rise up and, and make a revolution, which is not such an easy thing to do. Most people just like to stay down and keep calm and go on with uh, doing whatever they're doing, but you get a revolution going, you really gotta get people riled up, don't you? They have to be willing to die for their cause. That's the book that did it. They read that book, said, we'll die for this. And that's why there's the United States of America. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but how about who here has heard of evolution, the theory of evolution? Raise your hand if you've heard of it. Okay. Now raise your hand if you have that book with you today. <laughs> raise your hand if you have it at home. Raise your hand if you have it in the car. There's only one person in the back. Raise your hand. Um, raise your hand if you've ever read it before. There's only three people in the room who have read it before. And now again, how many people have heard of the theory of evolution? You've heard of the theory of evolution. You've heard of it. Raise your hand. Everybody. The reason that we've all heard about the theory of evolution and everybody in Bangalore has heard of the theory of evolution is because somebody took the trouble to write a book about it. Humans revere books. Books are, and, and let me just say, they started in a very simple way. People from time immemorial have been writing things down. They've written things on shells. They've written things on... It, uh, walls, they on leaves, and this is a leaf, of course. This is a palm leaf, and it, it was arduous process to produce a book back in the old days. 
How long would it take you to write a POY by hand if you had to start right now? Could you finish by the end of the day, by the end of the week? What to speak of all the uh, perfection of yogas we have now available to us, that's because we got the printing press. A man named Gutenberg invented a press in order to make Bibles more available to the world. And, and the British uh, Bible Society then improved on the technology, and it's been improving ever since. Originally, the printing press came to, to make Bibles available to the world. Shila, that was not lost upon Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. This is a picture of the printing press that he bought from Cleveland, Ohio, USA. That's the brand he bought. It's there in the museum in uh, Cal Calcutta. If you go to the museum at the Bug Bazaar, you'll find the original printing press that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta himself brought over from Cleveland, Ohio, USA. This company is no longer in business. They went out of business around 1975. But that's the printing press. And books are containers. Everyone say that. Books are containers. Uh, let me ask a question, Anuradha. What are books? books no, use the microphone. I'm just asking her. Go ahead. No, no, use the microphone. Books are the containers. Books are containers, say it. Books are containers. Do you agree with her? Yes. Everyone agrees with, uh, with other writers that say Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Books are containers. Now, what do they contain? Idea seeds. So when the containers go out in the world, like the, the book by Charles Darwin about, about this the theory of evolution, and then you've got the Common Sense book by uh, this Thomas Paine, and myriad other books the seeds of ideas spill out. They go into the minds and hearts of human beings. Why is it so effective going to human beings? What is a human being anyway? What is a jiva technically called? A, what category of energy is a jiva? <laughs> Tatusta shakti. What does tatusta mean? Marginal energy. I would propose another phrase. Tatusta means open to suggestion. Every jiva is open to suggestion. If, if you just say, hey, little jiva, come over here. I want to tell you something. I want you to drink this drink. It's got sugar. It's caramel colored. It's got a little bubbles in it. You drink this, you'll be happy. In fact, you make a sign and says, jiva, drink Coca-Cola. You'll be happy. So jiva looks at it and goes, hey, that's where happiness is, in a bottle of Coca-Cola. And jiva buys some and brings it home. Every cell in his body is saying, don't put that in here. But little Jiva saw the sign. Little Jiva's open to suggestion. He drinks the Coca-Cola. And did he find happiness? Not exactly. So everyone's walking around the world open to suggestion. And they're getting Coca-Cola instead of getting Bhagavad Gita. So this process of Sankirtan, there's a logic behind it. And the way to increase it here in Bangalore is not a mystery, it's a recipe. And here are the uh, parts of the recipe that are fundamental, and if you follow them, there's only four major parts, you follow them, I guarantee you, you'll be successful. So before I go to this part, I want to take a couple of reflections. A reflection is not a question. A question has a question mark at the end of it, and I have to answer, and I'm not gonna answer anything right now. I want you to reflect back something that you heard, that you found useful, that you can put in your pocket and take out of here. And if you left this room right now and somebody grabbed your arm out there and said, what is that guy talking about in there? This is the one thing that you're gonna say. And I want you to use the microphone and hold it close to your mouth so we can hear. And we'll take several of them. We have the fastest microphone runner in the history. <laughs> and if you don't get the microphone within seven seconds, We'll give you your money back from today's seminar. Okay, go ahead. Hare Krishna, thank you, Pranam Prabhuji. So, the, the part which I like the most was the technique. Uh, you told the technique, the best technique is just try out for the help of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's a, a time tested technique. Hare Krishna. 
Sampradaya of the book, yes. Very good. Mataji. I did want to say anything. Right from uh, Brahma till Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasat. Sorry, Srila Prabhupada. The book was the... It's a good cause to stand up for, isn't it? I mean, in general, books are high-minded material, and it's, you know, anyone who's around books, who's associated with books, they're considered to be high-minded. What to speak of transcendental books, right? Very nice point. Yes. Uh, chant Hare Krishna and teach others. This point strikes me Let's try it again. Chant, chant Hare Krishna, teach others. Teach others. Very good. I realize this is more effective by life experience. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. Praying to books. Say? Praying to books. Pray to the books. Yeah. You, you can pray to the books. In fact, Prabhupada told us, this is a little history. I think it's in my book. I can't remember if I wrote it or not. I think I did. But this is a, this is a true history. I've sourced it out. I talked to several devotees who were there. When traveling Sankirtan first started, this was a new thing, going out in a van or a car or a bus. Actually, what, some devotees bought an old bus and they started traveling. They were away from the temple. When we first joined, we were taught, we just take Mahaprasadam from the temple. Everything, we all lived in the temple. We all were right next to it. And so when the devotees went out on traveling Sankirtan, they had to sleep away from the temple. So it was a conundrum about what to eat. So they were going to the store buying, you know, boga, and then they'd make like some simple offering. No one knew how to offer very, you know, there was no sophisticated thing for offering back then either. And they were eating. And so there, there were these factions. One side said, you can't do that. That's illegal to take that food. It's not offered to the deity. Can't do it. The other side said, well, how are we going to live? We're going on travel Sankirtan. So there was this controversy, and several devotees drove all the way from San Francisco to Los Angeles to meet Prabhupada and ask him about the question, ask him this question. And Prabhupada said, it is offered in the fire of Sankirtan. And he said, he said that you can offer the boga directly to the books. They're your deities. Okay, who is next? Oh, yeah. uh, yes. Real secret for book distribution is to Cry and beg for the mercy of the Lord. Yes, cry and beg for the mercy of the Lord. You are absolutely 100% correct. Mataji. Hare Krishna. Mission statement of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Every town and village. Correct. That's a big scope, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, Mataji. Books are containers. Yes. Book deities, if we are serving them by distributing them, we are in touch always. Yes. What did he say? <laughs> <laughs> when we take the book, de book deities. Oh, when we take the book deities, we're always in touch with Krishna all the time. Yes. Prabhu in the back. It's the marketplace for the holy name. Marketing is a big science. Mataji back here knows. She studied oh. marketing. She knows all about it. Yes. Feel the presence of Krishna in, while doing book distribution. And you're in the dynamic. presence of Krishna when you're doing book distribution. Yes. Three more. One. Book distribution is high sadhana. Book distribution is high sadhana. Everyone say it. This is the highest sadhana, according to the Bhagavatam, Shukadev Goswami, in describing the mood of Lord Shiva. You know this pastime, when he drank the ocean of poison. So Shukadev Goswami, describing the mood of Lord Shiva, who is uh, the greatest of Vaishnavas, Vaishnavanam Yatashambhu, he says, Tapyante lokatapena sarva prayasojana parama araranam taddi purushasya kilatmanam. He says, the highest method of worshiping the Supreme Personality of God, it called Parama Aradhanam, is to take some suffering upon oneself to alleviate the suffering of others. That is the highest method of worshiping the Lord who is within everyone's heart. Okay, we got two more before we move on. Yes. You got a wanna. You got a wanna. Everyone say that. <laughs> Yeah, we should put a big banner up. You gotta wanna. We follow Weight Watchers. If you're gonna lose weight, you gotta wanna. Actually, in every city, when we're reading books, they actually get mad and say that, like, material books are like, you know, bookworms. People who read books are bookworms. Yes, you become a bookworm. Bookworm. <laughs> but when we, uh, when I heard this, it's actually spiritual knowledge, and this is through book from Brahma till Prabhupada. 
it's actually a great inspiration for newcomers like us yes. to do book distribution. Correct. Absolutely. Yes. So the, we're the best kind of bookworms. All right. That's it for now. Save those because we're going to have more reflections later. I do it frequently throughout the, the presentation. So there'll be plenty of time to share. But I, that, that meant a lot to me, those points that you remember just now. It really augmented the points in my mind. That it's a, an amazing experience to speak to an audience and then you are hearing things and you're reflecting them back, especially with your own enthusiasm and realization. It gives me impetus to go on for, to stay more. Should I do a little bit more? Yeah. You want to stand up? Let's stand up just for one minute. And try stretching. Put your hands like this and stretch up high like this. And say, go Runga. <laughs> okay, now change the, the webbing on your hands and move it like that. Just one finger over and stretch up high. Try to touch the ceiling with your palms and say, Go Runga. Go say, Go Runga one more time. Go one more time. Go Scare the voties downstairs. Go okay, all right. So, you know, this, this slide gives me a lot of hope. Success is not a mystery. You know, if it was just chance that some people got ahead because uh, they were just lucky, then I'd be morose because there'd be no way to actually become an agent for change and say that I want to be successful too. But there is a way to become successful if you follow the recipe. And I'm going to give you a recipe for success in book distribution. And I guarantee it 100%. If you follow these four laws of book distribution, You'll individually become expert at book distribution and prolific, but your community and your region will turn into a dynasty for book distribution. I have proof. Yeah, that's a Hari Bowl there. Say Hari Bowl. I tell you with great modesty that the community I come from started with just a few devotees. We focused from the very beginning when we opened that place on book distribution. We started in a very, very humble way. We couldn't even afford a book table when we first started. There were only a th about three devotees going out. When we first had some goals, we raised $100. That's just a couple thousand rupees or whatever it is. And we thought that was a big stretch. We celebrated. We've been celebrating since 2007 when we started. This last year, 2019, our little community of grahastas and kids, children, gave to the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust $607,000 because of this, these principles I'm about to show you. So I know they work, and we've employed them in other places too, following these four laws. So here we go. Four laws of book distribution. The first law is that your sadhana must be strong. What's the first law? Your sadhana must be strong. That is correct. Your sadhana must be strong. Here are three words Prabhupada used in various places. I strung them together in a little bracelet that you can wear wherever you go. Strict, serious, and sincere. Say it. Strict, serious, and sincere. Yes. When you perform strict, serious, and sincere sadhana, you get a taste. And let me just tell you that all advancement in Krishna consciousness takes place at the level of absorption. You have to be absorbed when you chant and read and hear and serve. And I'll give you an example of chanting when you're not absorbed. I'm chanting, but I'm thinking, when's this going to be over? How many more rounds do I have to do? And it seems like it's taking a long time just to do one round. That's when my mind is absorbed in the river of time and being carried away by time. Have you ever chanted, I'm sure you have, when you're feeling that, how did my 16 rounds get over so soon? I wish I could stay here longer and chant more rounds. Or when you're in the, absorbed in the river of time, someone pulls out a Chaitanya Charamrita and said, let's read for a little while, and you say, I got to go. I hear my mom calling me. She needs a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I got to go home. <laughs> because the mind rejects the idea. I don't want to hear. Versus somebody pulls out a Chaitanya Charita and it's the happiest sight you could see that now we get to hear again. 
So we have to come to this point of absorption through strict, serious, and sincere sadhana. And there's a lot to say about that. It's a whole other seminar. But the fact is, once we have that absorption, we have what's called overflow. Overflow. It means we have something to distribute. People aren't buying books from you. I'm going to make a radical statement. They're not interested in the book. You know what they're interested in? You. They look at you. When they see your countenance, they see a brightness that comes from you. Every living entity is putting off some kind of an energy. And when they feel from you the energy that they're looking for, that everybody's looking for, happiness, that can only come from the Brahma Bhuta platform, Prasanatma. You're feeling Prasanatma. That's what they're buying. They might not even know what the book is. They might not even care because they see it in you. And that only comes from strict, serious, and sincere sadhana and distributing the overflow. That's what you're giving them. So in strict, serious, and sincere sadhana, just a few practical points. The day starts, the, the, your, your day starts the night before. Okay, be careful about the night before. Try to be regulated and go to sleep early so you can wake up and have strict, serious, and sincere sadhana. Go to bed on time. Sit in a circle. Sit with others and chant japa in a concentrated way. You have to be a little into politics to understand this next one. But somebody gave me this hat. We have a, a president in the United States. You may have heard of, I won't even mention his name, but he has this hat that says, Make America Great Again. So we decided it was a better idea to make Joppa great again. <laughs> and we've started this program at our temple and many other temples where the, the whole community sits together in a circle. And we chant Joppa and we stop at intervals and read something about the, the power of the holy name. And it's to emphasize that everything comes from the strict, serious, and sincere chanting of the holy names and other kinds of sadhana. We win with the basics in sadhana. You have to do the basics every day. If you do the basics in a sound and solid way, then you'll advance. So here's one of those solid ways, Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter a day. So this is a program called CHAD. CHAD stands for chapter a day. And it means a little drops a day, little uh, pieces of dust. This is uh, from Japan. Chiri motsumareba yamatanaru. They say in Japan that little specks of dust, they add up to a mountain. So if you do your sadhana well each day, you'll start to become as strong as the Himalayas. Prabhupada said that. He told a devotee that. If you do strong sadhana every day, then you'll, you'll become, your devotional service will become as strong as the Himalaya. So he encouraged us all to read one chapter of Bhagavad Gita a day. That means at least read the verses, the Sanskrit or the English. Here's another quote. So here's our website, readchad.com. There are thousands of devotees all over the world now that every day, without fail, they chant at least one chapter of Bhagavad Gita every day. And you can do just the Sanskrit or just the English, or you can do everything, including all the purports. But Touch the Bhagavad Gita every day. Read at least one chapter every day. That will change your life, I guarantee you. That will give you power to distribute the Bhagavad Gita if you're reading it every day. It will change your family life. It will change your social life. It will change your working environment. Everything about your life will change if you just add this one thing, chant one chapter of Bhagavad Gita every day. Here's another device. This is called Be a Sage Page by Page. I invented this myself when I was thinking about reading all the Prabhupada's books and it seemed like a daunting task. If you look at a whole bookcase full of all the Prabhupada's books, it seems like I don't have time to read all those. Doesn't it seem like that sometimes? Or do you have more time down here in Bangalore? I want to how many hours do you get in a day down here? In California, we get 24. What do you get here? <laughs> Is it the same? So maybe you feel that you've felt this before yourself that all these books, you only have 24 hours a day, how am I going to read it? Here's how. You break it down into smaller parts. And this app that's free, you can get it for Android or for iOS, free app. And it will tell you how many pages to read each day in order to complete any of Prabhupada's books within a given amount of time. So as an example, if you wanted to complete Prabhupada's 
a complete Srimad Bhagavatam, 12 cantos. Within two years, all you have to do is read 21 pages a day. Does that sound reasonable? Yes. How about if you wanted to read it in one year? 41 pages a day. Only. Put only at the end. 41 pages a day only. They do that here in India. Rupees 21 only. <laughs> Second law of book distribution is you must get books. Say it. What's the first law of book distribution? <laughs> Say it again, together. <laughs> That's right. And the second law of book distribution is? <laughs> yes, we've done scientific studies. We did, went to many major universities. We did double-blind studies. And the, the results of our study, we have the data available. Anyone wants to see it. We have spreadsheets and graphs. The conclusion was you can't distribute books you don't have. It's practically a law of thermodynamics. And so I want you to all say this to scare the devotees downstairs. I want you to say it in a military way, like when they say, uh, ask you a question in boot camp, you say, sir, yes, sir. You go, sir, yes, sir. Now, when I ask you what's the second law of book distribution, I want you to say, get books. OK. okay. I didn't ask you yet. What's the second law of book distribution? Get books. You're good here. This is going to be a powerful team. OK. Get books, because when you have books, and you should get books, because as I told you before, these are the rarest and most valuable deities on the Earth planet today. And it's a miracle that we have them available through high-speed printing. If you were to get these books hand copied, you wouldn't have books. So take advantage, and don't take it for granted. Don't think, oh, we have books everywhere. I've seen books. I have them in my car. But, you know, take. Take this seriously. The books are the most valuable asset we have in our Christian conscious movement. We are the Sampradaya of the book. So if you keep books with you wherever you go and you make sure you have books on hand, you will distribute books. Now let me ask you a question. If you don't have any books in your house, if you don't have any books in your temple or in your car, how many books will you distribute? Approximately. <laughs> Approximately how much? Zero, approximately zero, yes. And if you have books and you keep them with you wherever you go, what, what is the amount that you could possibly distribute that's, um, what, what would be the equation that you would say? You could say higher than zero, right? Higher than zero, okay. So that's algebra. I think you can figure that out. So get books. Here's devotees loading cases of books into their goshalas. And get all the languages that you need. This is another miracle that we have books translated into various languages. That, when I was, when I was interviewing devotees around the world who had uh, translated Prabhupada's books into various languages, this is one of the most difficult tasks in the whole movement. Because there are a lot of languages that, that words just don't match up. You, it's an art to be able to translate it into various languages to, so the other people of other countries can understand it. But we have that. Somehow or other, Prophet inspired thousands of people to come forward and help him publish his books and get them translated into other languages. So make sure you get those books too. Don't miss anybody. Use language cards. Now a language card is a magical way of distributing books because if you meet somebody who doesn't speak your language, all you have to do is hand them the book, then hand them the card, and then stand there in mountain pose and don't say a word and wait until they decide because they know that you know that they know what it means when you hand the card. <laughs> and now it's just a simple yes or no, it becomes binary and it's a very powerful way to distribute books in various languages. In fact, at our yatra, which I'm, we're on our way to right now, uh, we hold every year, uh, in Jagannath Puri, the last few years, we, in five days, with just 100 yatris, and half of them that don't speak English, we distributed 5,000 books in five days on our yatra. And we did it using language cards. We had cards in Bengali, Hindi, and Orian. And all the devotees, a lot of them from China, they would just hand the person a book, then hand them the card, stand in mountain pose, and receive the donation. And this is one of the ways that you can distribute books. 
th uh, third law of book distribution, we don't say it military, but we say it twice. Please say it twice. 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 No, please say this twice. <laughs> okay, together. Yeah, the reason we say it twice is it's so important. Because if you have books and you just show them and you figure out ways to, to show them, you will sell books, I guarantee you. And it's based on the principle that little Jeeva's wandering around the universe looking for stuff. And if you hold it up, little Jeeva will go like, hey, what's that? I'll take it. And if you don't hold it up, little Jeeva has nothing to look at. So make sure you hold the books up. Now, let's just say you don't know anything about book distribution. All you know is that you'd like to distribute some books and you just follow this law. You follow the first law, which you chanted some rounds this, in the morning. In the second law, you got some books. Third law, is the more, you just heard this, the more you show, the more you sell, but you don't know what to say to people or where to, what to do. So you just walk out to the corner and you just hold some books up like that and you just stand there. And you don't do anything else but just stand there. What do you think might happen? What are the possibilities of what would happen? You said that with such conviction. Give her the microphone. What is your name, Mataji? Ramani Radhika has something to tell us. What Pe will happen? People will come to see. Do you hear the conviction in her voice? Yeah. This, this is the sign of a powerful Sankirtan devotee. Yeah. She said it with complete conviction. She knows something. that She knows that people will come and take the book. And it's true. You're absolutely right. I've seen it. I've seen like in Vrindavan, there are Russian devotees that just stand there in front of Krishna Balaram, right? And they just hold the book and people come over and buy it. Because little Jiva is open to suggestion, he sees things and he comes over and he's like, what is that book? So if you innovate and you find out more and more ways to show books, like here's a book table, there's a rack, it's easy to see the books. Do you think people would walk by and buy a book? Perhaps, because you're showing them. Here it is, devotees walk up and they're showing this guy a book. Look, he's looking at it for the first time, like, what is this? See curious little Jiva on the left? You can see his face, he's like, huh? What? And the devotee there is going like, yeah, little Jiva, take a look at this. See, the more you show, the more you sell. And little Jiva will take it because he looked at it. Here's somebody boldly knocking on someone's door. You knock on the door, what's going to happen? We have no idea. So the heart's going boom, 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 boom. And you're going, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 But when the little Jiva opens the door and you go, hi, look at this, then, you know, if you didn't do that, little Jeeva's not going to take a book. But if you show it, he might take a book. And here, Mataji's showing the book. See, that person's looking, considering. No consideration without showing. So anywhere you go, and you see several devotees there with a sign, books on yoga and meditation, they're making it very, very visible. They're in innovating. This is marketing, right? Marketing means make it visible. Think of ways to make it more visible. And I guarantee you, you follow this law. The more you show, the more you sell, you'll sell more books. Just show more, you'll sell more. It's very simple. There you go. There you go again. And here's the fourth law. You must organize. Everyone please say. <laughs> yes. What's the first law of book distribution? Your sadhana must be strong. Say it. Your sadhana must be strong. Number two is military. No, no. You're kicked out of the military now. Okay. So number two is military, and it is? You're still not scaring the devotees downstairs. Number two is? Correct. Now the third law, we don't say it military, but we always say it twice because it's so important. The third law is? Correct. And here's number four, and that is you must organize. Because if you want to do this as a hobby and, and just, you know, not take it seriously, then you don't have to organize. And, you know, where are the books? I have no idea. I think that Bhakta Deepak has the key. Where's Bhakta Deepak? Bhakti Deepak, he took off to Mysore. What's he doing in Mysore? I have no idea. He took the Sankirtan car. So even if we have, we can't go out. No organization, no thought. Uh, leave the books in a dark place. Uh, don't report scores to the Sankirtan. There's always, you just do it as a hobby. I just do it in my spare time. Yeah, that's okay. 
If you just want to stay at a small level and do a few books here and there, that's fine. But if you want to build an impressive enterprise, if you want to build a dynasty of book distribution, which is actually an interesting project, that makes life really interesting and it attracts a lot of attention from the right people, like Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> then organize. You know how to organize. And if you don't, find somebody who does and say, come over here, show us how to organize this. And then once you get organized, there is no limit to how much you can increase. No limit. How could a little one-horse temple like ours rise to be the number one temple, not only in North America, but we haven't checked yet how everybody else did around the world, but we're giving over half a million dollars a year for book distribution. How does a one-horse little grahasta temple with little kids, babies, five-year-olds going out distributing books rise to that level? Through organization, two-year-olds, zero-year-olds going out. <laughs> okay, so here's Prabhupada. He organized, he thought about the organization way before he inaugurated it, and that's one of the reasons it was so successful. It's not that he just did it haphazardly. He thought about it. He used all the principles of a strategic planning. Here's evidence. Here's the seventh purpose, seven out of seven of the purposes of ISKCON with a view. Now, I want you to listen carefully. And if there's any attorneys in the room, I, I need your help in interpreting this. With a view towards achieving aforementioned purposes to publish and distribute periodicals, magazines, books, and other writings. What does that mean? Aforementioned. Whatever came before will be achieved through what? Isn't that amazing? That's just a side point. But the fact is that Prabhupada had so much faith in book distribution, he put this at the seven that said, you'll achieve all the four I mentioned. The aforementioned were six others by distributing books. Isn't that amazing? Say yes. It is amazing. Okay, create an event calendar. Once you put something on the calendar as a community or as an individual and you say, I'm doing it on this date, your life will change because our minds are like heat-seeking missiles. We go towards a goal. And when you write it down and you say, it's at this point of time that it's going to happen, that's when the energy starts to become more efficient. It's called forced efficiency. If I just say, I'll do it any time, then it'll never happen. But if you say, I'm going to do it on this date, which just happens to be the first of some month, then you know you're working towards something. When NASA builds a rocket, the big event seems to be the rocket shooting off into, the, into space. But actually, the bigger events are what happened behind the scenes because of forced efficiency. Did you know that the entire system of management that is taught in top flight schools all over the world came from NASA because of their forced efficiency in having to uh, get rockets off at a certain time and be very careful about accounting for all the parts of the rocket and making sure it all gets going. So in the same way, when you have this monthly Sankirtan festival, you're working towards a date to increase Sankirtan, the whole community, all the aforementioned principles that Prabhupada mentioned, the purposes of ISKCON, they also become augmented by this power of organization in Sankirtan. Goals are potent. My old friend Will McCoy said, goals are potent. It's so true. As soon as you set a goal individually or collectively, it's like flipping a switch and all the energy comes in. As soon as you say, we're doing this, then you have to figure out how to do it, and that's where the energy comes from. Set goals. You have to set goals. Manage your inventory very carefully. Here's a, a relatively well-managed book room. You can see that, how nice it looks? It should look nice and take care of the inventory. You should know where everything is. You should know how many books you have and when you need more. Build a follow-up strategy. There's so many ways to do that, but if you have a strategy for it, then you're going to be bringing in people and actually engaging them. Build team spirit. This, I think, is one of the most important points. Did you know that at our temple at ISV, we don't report any individual scores? I'm not saying you have to do that, but I'm just saying that we think of ourselves as one team. 
and we worked together. And then, in fact, seven years ago in North America, we got together, the GBCs and Temple Presidents, and we decided we're going to work as one team in, in North America, that means America and Canada, and we're going to shoot towards a percentage increase overall, all of us working together. And did you know the first two years we increased by 20% and subsequent years since then we've increased by 10% overall as a group? And did you know that we've tripled book distribution in just seven years in North America because of working in a team spirited way? So, so this is very important to think as a team and we're all for one and one for all. What gets measured gets improved. Analyze and report scores. There's so many ways you can analyze what you're doing, how many books you're doing, where you're doing them, and on what days you're doing, and emphasizing the great art of book distribution. And I'm going to tell you about my realizations of how to distribute books to Hindus <laughs> uh, just after we take a break, because it's 11 o'clock or just a few minutes before. Let's just see if you have a couple of reflections before we take our first break. Yes, Prabhu. One, two. You must get the books. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Sadhana must be strong. Prabhupada, in the seventh last point, has mentioned the books are the basis. Like all six will be achieved if the yeah. book distribution is very well. That's amazing, isn't it? That's a real gem. Yeah. Create an event calendar. Yes, create an event calendar. The more you show, the more you sell. The more you show, the more you sell. The more you show, the more you sell. We always say it twice because it's so important. Thank you. Yes. Yes, you want to attract the attention of the right people, comma, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> Little Jiva is open for suggestion. What did he say? Little Jiva is open for suggestion. Yes, the little Jiva means open to suggestion. You know, remember how um, Mantra, Mantra was talking to Kaikei? Kaikei was so happy about Ram being inaugurated, and then Mantra was like, nah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> this is a bad idea. I was like, really? And after... A you know, just a, a little while, she totally flipped and changed. And this happens all the time to l little Jiva. Yes. Success is not a mystery, it is a recipe. That is correct. If you want, to bake a you want to bake a cake, find out somebody who has the best recipe and you say, how did you bake a cake? And then you can follow the recipe. And this is how we advance, not only in book distribution, but also in devotional service. Yes. Roji, I like what you told about celebrating $100 uh, goal. Yes, and this is, I'm glad you brought that up because birds fly in the sky as high as they're able. And the sky is unlimited. So you can always go higher. But if you celebrate every success and also appreciate devotees whenever they do anything, you'll develop an, an environment where you, what we call this, encourage the heck out of everybody. Take your time to encourage devotees, catch them doing something right and appreciate it. It, it uh, gives courage in the heart. In fact, the word courage comes from French. Of core means the heart. We move through life successfully or not because of the level of courage that we have in our heart. And if we get encouragement from others on our team, then we'll be able to do more and more and more. So important. Last one. Prabhu, all the way in left field as we say in baseball. Okay, go ahead. Distribute? Yes. When you do strict series and sincere devotional service, you have overflow. So as Radhanath Marj once told me, I was telling about all my problems in management, this, that, this is so hard. And he told me one thing, always stuck with me. He said the real secret to management is that you have to be blissful. <laughs> he said if you're not blissful, you can't manage. You can't do anything, especially in an organization like ours. So it's the same thing in book distribution, same thing in management, same thing with solving the problems of life. First, get blissful. Strict, serious, and sincere sadhana is the only way to solve the problems in life because that's what makes you blissful. And if you don't have bliss, you don't have anything. Thank you very much for attending the first part. And we're going to come back here right, right when Sri Ram Prabhu tells us. We come back at 11.25 here. 11.25.
Okay, come back on 1124 so that we can start right on time. Go <laughs> Premanandi